All right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory due to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. I'd like to give double honors unto the apostles and the artists of Great Millstone, where I learned this truth from, and I like to say peace and salutations unto the hopefully elect. You know, today, Monday, October 6th, Slakia, Monday, October 16th, 2023. You know, and a brother sent me this article from Defense News, and it says Congressional Commission calls for more nuclear arsenal expansion. So, you know, as you can see, you know, we're in that time where, you know, you have these nations that are pretty much gearing up for war and not just any war, you know, a nuclear war, you know. So I'm just going to go into this article and bring out a few scriptures. Lord willing, this lesson is edifying straight to the point. <clears throat> it says a congressionally mandated commission on Thursday released its final report on the U.S. nuclear posture, recommending an increase in additional assets as China rapidly expands its own arsenal. At the same time, the commission found the Pentagon and Energy Department are lagging behind their modernization goals, raising questions about the ability to develop additional nuclear assets. <clears throat> Excuse me, Slakia. Republicans seized on the report to call for more aggressive nuclear modernization, including additional investments in an industrial base that's struggling to keep pace with the tight timelines needed to implement current strategic objectives. House Armed Services Committee Mike Rogers, Republican of Alabama, endorsed the report's findings in a statement, calling it a wake-up call for our strategic posture. For the first time in history, the United States must deter two near-peer nuclear adversaries at the same time, said Rogers. The results of their report detail the gravity of the situation we face and emphasize that the current trajectory of the U.S. nuclear deterrent is insufficient to deter the looming Chinese and Russian threat. <clears throat> yes, you know, Russia and China are just two, you know, of the many countries that hate America, you know, because this country is wicked, you know. All these countries have made deals with America and ultimately, you know, all of these countries are going to be angry at her, you know. Continuing, it says Senator Roger Wicker of Mississippi, the top Republican on the Armed Services Committee, called the report a stark reminder of the significant work needed to expand our nuclear submarine industrial base to increase production and reduce repair time. <clears throat> he reiterated his calls for a defense supplemental spending package to bypass the $886 billion security funding caps laid out in the May debt ceiling agreement while growing the military budget annually beyond inflation. It is essential that Congress, lucky, it is essential that Congress move forward quickly with a plan to provide our military with the resources necessary to restore our nuclear deterrent, said Wicker in a statement. Congress established the Congressional Commission on the Strategic Posture of the United States to examine the United States nuclear capability as part of the fiscal 2022 defense policy bill. The commission's report identify capabilities beyond existing programs needed to accelerate and enhance nuclear modernization efforts. The current modernization program should be supplemented <clears throat> to ensure U.S. nuclear strategy remains effective in two nuclear peer environment. It said the report states that current modernization programs were 
developed under the 2010 security environment, mainly with Russia on mind and China as a lesser included case. The aggressive foreign policies of China and Russia, the extent of their nuclear modernization and the policy lucky and the possibility of conflict with China and Russia were not foreseen, said the report. It assumed that the risk of a major nuclear conflict remains low, but the risk of a conventional military conflict with both countries has grown, thereby raising the possibility of a nuclear strike on the homeland. The commission notes in its report that while it did not conduct a cost analysis it's like you, a cost analysis of our recommendations it is obvious they will cost money <clears throat> a July congressional budget office reported projects that nuclear modernization efforts will cost $756 billion over the next decade and that excludes calls for the additional nuclear initiatives the commission would like the U.S. to pursue. Specifically, the commission calls for additional U.S. threat nuclear capabilities in Europe and the Indo-Pacific modernizing nuclear command and control capabilities and effective employing emerging technology including hypersonics, quantum computing, generative AI, and autonomous vehicles. It also plans to reconvert submarine launch ballistic missile launchers, SLBMs, and B-52 bombers that were rendered unable to deliver nuclear payloads under the New START treaty. Russia, it's like yeah, Russia suspended its participation in that treaty. Its last remaining nuclear arms control accord with Washington last year. Moscow has now, it's like it was, Moscow has also threatened to pull out of the comprehensive nuclear test ban treaty, though it says it will not only resume testing if the U.S. does, the U.S. Senate has ratified the test ban treaty. Additionally, the commission calls for uploading some or all of unemployed warheads in U.S. inventory, deploying additional Sentinel intercontinental ballistic missiles and long-range standoff weapons, increasing the planned number of B-21 bombers and upping the planned production of the Columbia-class ballistic missile submarines. And yes, again, you have, you know, the primary two nations, it's like you're the primary two nations, you know, Russia and China, <clears throat> you know, Gog and Magog versus Babylon the Great, you know, and they're pretty much upping their arsenal. But as we know, you know, America is going to lose this war, you know. And this is the one war that America is not going to win. So they can invest in, you know, as many missiles, even their defense systems, you know, as long as they want. But it's prophesied that this place is going to be destroyed by thermonuclear missiles, you know. And then China, Iran and all the other countries that are, you know, allies with Russia, you know, they're just going to add to the damage that's going to be done, you know. So I'm going to start in the book of Joel, chapter 3 and verse 9. And it says, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. And yes, this is pretty much what these other nations are doing. <clears throat> you know, 
nations that were pretty much afraid of America at one point in time because, you know, as we know, during World War II, America was the only nation at that time that had, you know, nuclear capabilities or atomic capabilities, you know, when they dropped a bomb on Japan, you know. But pretty much now in this time that we're in, you know, these other nations also have, you know, nuclear missiles as well. So this is pretty much what they're doing. You know, they're getting ready for the Third World War, you know. Verse 11, assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about thither. Cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat or Yahweh Shapat in Hebrew. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. And yes, when our Lord Yahweh Shai returns, you know, he's going to judge all those nations that are over there. You know, they're all going to be destroyed. You know? and then just to bring that out. And second address. Slack, yeah. This is Second Address, Chapter Thirteen. And I'm going to start at verse five, and it says, "And after this, I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men." <clears throat> Out of number from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. And they're talking about Yahweh Shai. You know, when our Lord comes back, he's going to make war with these other nations. You know, he's going to go to war with these other nations. So as it says, you know, these other nations are going to be gathered together. And, you know, the valley of Yahweh Shapat, you know. Verse six, but I beheld and lo. He had graven himself a great mountain and flew upon it. It's talking about that fathership, you know, that he's going to come back on. Verse 7, but I have seen the re it's like it, but I would have seen the region or place where out the hill was graven and I could not. And, you know, this chariot is going to be so huge, you know, Edris pretty much thought that, you know, there was a mountain, you know, cut out, you know, from somewhere, but. It wasn't. He couldn't, you know, that's how huge, you know, this fathership is going to be, you know, it's going to be, you No, know, you won't be able to see the end of it, you know. Verse eight, after this, I beheld and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were so afraid and yet there is fight. And yes, you know. These nations, once our Lord comes back, because, you know, they're going to be going to war with each other over there in the Middle East. You know, but once he comes back, you know, they're going to be afraid, but he's going to put the spirit on them to fight him, you know. And there's nothing they're going to be able to do. They're going to be destroyed, you know, by our Lord directly. And these are the things that are going to be going on during World War Three, you know. <clears throat> But, you know, before that happens, you still have these other nations pretty much gearing up for war. And I'm going to go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38. And I'm going to start at 2, and it says, Son of man, set thy face against Gog in the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh. Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, 
the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords, Persia, Ethiopia, Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his bands, Tagarma of the North Quarters, and all his bands, and many people with thee. Be thou prepared, and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, be thou a guard unto them. After many days thou shalt be visited, in the latter days shalt thou come into the land that is brought back from the sword, and is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have always been waste, but it is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely. All of them, Slaki, that last one's pretty much, you know, talking about once, you know, we get the land of Israel back, you know, the nation of Israel as a whole, you know, we're going to dwell safely. You know, we won't have to worry anymore. But pretty much Ezekiel 38, 2 to 7, you know, it's pretty much, you know, the Lord is going to put that old USSR spirit back on Russia, which we're seeing, you know, because at one point in time, you know, Russia and the United States, you know, they had. Uh, you know, because I don't want to state it wrong. If they didn't, if they weren't allies, you know, they pretty much, you know, they weren't enemies, you know, at the time. You know, they were pretty much, you know, looking for the correct word, you know. But pretty much, you know, they weren't at war with each other. But, you know, that was, you know, during the fall of the Soviet Union, you know. In 19, either 1990 or 1991, you know, Russia wasn't, you know, in that same spirit. You know, they were pretty much, you know, West friendly, you know. But now, you know, Vladimir Putin, you know, he pretty much hates America. You know, China hates America. Iran, India, you know, these other nations, they hate America, you know. And they're all going to destroy America, well, primarily Russia. But, you know, these nations are going to shoot their missiles on America, you know. Excuse me. And that's going to be done by way of this device. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 54 and verse 16. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals and the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. And yes, that's going into those ICBM missiles. And as you can see, you know, Russia has increased their arsenal. China, North Korea, you know, the U.S. is, you know, trying to expand their arsenal as well. That waster to destroy is going into these ICBM missiles that are going to be created. And every missile that is created is going to be used, you know. There's not going to be one left sitting in a museum, you know. Each and every last one of these nuclear weapons is going to be used during this final war, you know. <clears throat> this is the book of Revelation, chapter 11. And verse 14, and it says, the second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. And yes, you know, the more and more we see news like this happening, you know, it's just letting us know that, you know, the third woe, World War Three, is coming quickly. But, you know, our Lord Yahweh Shai also said this. This is the book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 6 and it says and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars see that ye be not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet and you know 
although we're hearing of wars, you know, you still have the war between Russia and Ukraine going on. <clears throat> and as of recently, you know, you have, you know, Hamas at war with, you know, the Israelis. You know, we're hearing of these wars and rumors of wars, but the end isn't yet. Before this third world, you know, this third world's war can come to pass, you know, the prophecy of Revelation chapter 13 and verse 16, you know, the mark of the beast, which is the RFID microchip, you know, it has to come to pass before this destruction can take place, you know, and that's what our Lord meant, you know, although we hear of these things, you know, the end is not yet. I'm going to read verse 7 says, for a nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. And yes, you know, these are the things that are going to be taking place, you know, in the earth, you know, because the famine in the United States is still looming, you know, and they're talking about another C variant that's supposed to be released, you know, here. And, you know, you have earthquakes, you know, that are happening all over the world, you know, as it says, these are just the beginning of sorrows, you know, this is going to be an extremely terrible time on the earth, you know, it's going to be bad. And then. I'm going to go to the book of Malachi, chapter 4, and verse 1. And it says, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and all slack ye, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. So yes, you know, once these missiles are launched, you know, is going to completely destroy America, you know. Nothing is going to be left. This land is going to be completely desolate, you know. Mm. Lock you. I'm just gonna get this. It's the book of Second Peter, chapter three, and verse ten, and it says, "But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat." <clears throat> The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons are ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hastening unto the day of Yahweh, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. So yes, you know, we're supposed to you know, conduct ourselves, you know, in a holy manner, unlike, you know, the people of this world, because we know that these things are coming. You know, we know that our Lord is going to come back and destroy this place, you know. And then, I'm going to end it on this is the book of Revelation, chapter 17, and I'm going to start at verse 14. It says, These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is the Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called chosen and faithful, are called and chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. 
and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. And yes, you know, these other nations that hate America, even America's allies, you know, they're ultimately they're going to hate America and they're going to shoot their missiles over here as well and ultimately destroy her. You know, America is that great whore, you know, America is Babylon the Great and she is prophesied to be destroyed by fire, you know. So, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory due to Yahweh. Ba'ashim Yawashai, Ba'ashim Rakakwadash. I'd like to give double honors unto the apostles and the artists of Great Millstone, who are learned this truth from, and I'd like to say peace and salutations unto the hopefully elect. To the next time I say Shalom.